Praise the Lord, praise Jesus. Praise the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And for the Rock Intercessor Ministries, I'm here today to preach to you the word of Jesus Christ. Hoping that some of you give a right to God today, amen. Now today's message is riches. So I'm talking to you today about something that is very sensitive to woman body. To every one of us, and that is money. The most sensitive nerve that is in human body is one thing that runs from the heart right to your pocketbook and then comes back again. And you said to me today, you are not interested about money. First of all, I don't believe you, my dear friend. Secondly, even if you are not interested in money, I can tell you today, beyond shadow of that, that God is interested in your money. Because really, your money doesn't belong to you. So here is a sheep. And the owner of the sheep owns the wool. The one that owns the sheep owns the wool. And God is interested in how you secure your money, my dear friend. God is interested how you save your money. God is interested how you spend your money. God is interested how you share your money. God is interested how you store your money. As a matter of fact, God is going to do what? Measure you by the way you use your finances. And that is very interesting, see, because there's an index according to the way God can trust you and bless you. Listen to what the Bible says here in the book of Luke 16, verse 10 to 13. Watch this. One who is faithful in little, so that is what God calls money, little. One who is faithful in little is also faithful in much. And what God calls much is what? You trust in God. And one who is dishonest in very little, also what? Dishonest in much. Now watch this. He said, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous word, who will trust you to the true word? You see that? And if you have been faithful, if you have not been faithful in, in which is someone's own, who will give you something that belongs to you, to your own? So this is the question God is asking here today. And now watch this as I say, no servant can serve two masters. For neither he will hate one and love the other, or he will devote to one and despise the other. So now pay attention to this. He said, you, my friend, you cannot serve God and money at the same time. Amen? So what God wants you to do here is this. God wants to give you a true riches. Most people today just want money. But God says the money is only a test. It is only a way God will test you. It is only a, it's an index of your faithfulness towards God. So if you learn this today, God said that you're going to use money to do what? To test your faithfulness. God said that I will give you something that really matters. Because after all, money is all, all the thing that is very important in this world. Amen? So there's a money. Money in self cannot satisfy you. Money in self is not evil. Who made it good? God. Who made the slaver? God. Who made everything? God did, my dear friend. The Bible says in the book of Psalm, the earth is the Lord and fullness thereof. So God made it. So he doesn't think that money is evil, my dear friend. Money is not evil. The Bible says the root of money, I mean, it's all evil. If you love money, many of you today, if you have money, I'm happy for you. The Bible says this, however, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9, he said, For those who desire to be rich, for into temptation, into snare, into many senseless and harmful desires, and their brought people into ruin and distortion. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It is the true, his craving, that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. So the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It comes out from your heart. And which made people to do what? To stay away from their faith. And not only that also getting you away from God, but then again, the Bible says it pierces you through many sorrows. Many of you today are sorrows because of love of money. Many of you today don't want, you don't serve God because of love of money. And my message for you today is riches. So today, money itself is not an evil, but money in the hand of a, a good man, he can use it to what to feed the, the hunger. Money in the hands of faithful, that money can use to do what to give those who are tasty drink. Money in the hand of a good person, 
That money can be used to pay medical bills, hospital bills, and help the sick and clothe those who are naked. So money can be wonderful in the hand of a servant of God. I'm talking about those who have been born again. Amen? So 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 says, But understand this, in the last days, there will come times of difficulty. For many people will be lovers of what? Themselves and lovers of money. Proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their, to their parents, ungratefulness, unholy, heartless, unpleasant, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not having loving good, but treacherous, reckless, sworn with consent, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but yet denying his power. He says, avoid such people. That's very important, you see. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evils. And the Bible says that if you love money than God, he will stray you away from your faith. That is very, very important because you see here, something here is this. Here is a man. If you are faithful to little things, the Bible says what? Well, he will bless in different many ways. Listen to what the Bible says here. God speaking here in the book of Luke 16, verse 11. He said, if you are not faithful with unrighteous, unrighteous wealth, you will not, you will entrust you. Who will entrust you to true riches? If you have not been faithful in that which is less, we will do what? We trust you. Think about that. God is using money to do what? To test your faith, my dear friend. And he called it what? A little thing. And he called that is much what? You trust in God. So there's something here that a man who is faithful and also what? Spiritual things, he will not fail. You see? Because if you have to understand this, God is using money as a way to do what? To, to give us the contrast. Because we know that the two things that made the world go around is what? It's God and money. So here, the Bible is saying here that if you cannot be trusted with money, you will not be trusted with two riches. You know what the two riches are? It's beyond money. Trusting God, faithfulness, righteousness, holiness. And most of us here today, we just want money. We just need money for money's sake. Most of us, because of our egos. We have, we have big problems. We buy the things we don't need. With the money we do not even have, pile up the credit card bills to impress people you don't like. That's why they say more money, more problem. But I want to tell you here today that the two riches that what is really count if you receive this from God. The Bible said this will endure forever and forever. Our Lord is saying that He's going to give you a money. If you are your, if you are His steward, you will be entrusted, you will be tested with money god bless you brother so today i want you to see many of us here today god is looking into, into your account look into your resources to see if you can be trusted let me remind you that all the money that you have belongs to god you know we should think it's only 10 percent everything that you have belongs to god your money your house your job your car your life your wealth your children yourself everything belongs to almighty god you are just his steward and he's testing you so if you are not faithful with that, he cannot really do or give you two riches. So here is an index on how God wants to do what to bless you with a true word, special riches. If you are faithful at the least things, the Bible says certainly you will be greater in the plenty. So now I can tell you, now you can tell whether or not money is your master. Well, just quite say this, it is God or money. There's a two masters operating the world economy today and the master is something that controls you that have over power of your life tells you what to do now either you will be motivated by god or money and you will devote to one and despise the other you will love one and do or hate the other it is impossible for you to serve god and money you can devote your time for god and money at the same time it is impossible and how can you tell whether you are infected with the disease called the love of money here is a test for you today. The first test is what I call the trust test or the faith test. Are you trusting? Are you trusting in a certain riches? Now, if you are trust, if you are trusting in riches, my dear friend, you have got your eyes on the wrong place. Are you trusting your money or what your money can do for you? 
Where are you are trusting God for what God can do for you? Let me give you a couple of scriptures for you to understand the word of God right now. The first Timothy chapter 6 verse 7. He said, for we brought nothing into this world. We can take none out of this world. We can take nothing out of this world. It meaning that everything that you have belongs to God. I, I hope that you get this understanding, my dear friends. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 4 says, Riches do, do not profit in the day of wrath. So one of these days, the day of wrath will come. God is going to pour out his wrath upon this world. I will guarantee you that because that's the word of God. But then again, many of you think you can buy God off with money. I was last year, someone was telling me that he wants to pay God off. I, I tell him it's, it's impossible for you to do that. Even if you say it's your sister, it's impossible for you to do that. You see? So riches will profit you nothing on the day of wrath. But the Bible says righteousness delivers from death. And that's why the Bible is telling you that God is giving you a test. And another scripture here is Proverbs 11 verse 28. He says, whoever trusts in riches will fall. Again, whoever trusts in his riches will fall. Friend, it is very clear warning. It is plain and simple. The Bible says, if you are trusting your money, you are going down. No two ways about that. So now, I'm talking to you today about those who are worldly people, those who trust in money. Friend, if you are trusting in money, you are mistaken because the Bible says the righteous will flourish like a green leaf. So here is the second test for you, my dear friend. If you trust money, here is the second test for you, the priority test. The priority test. What are your goals in life? Really? What makes your butter? What sweeten your teeth? What tickets your sauce? What is your mo motive? What keeps you up in the night? What wakes up in the morning? What are your goals in life? Are your goals primary finance? Money, money? Or are your goals special? Many of you today, you want to make money, you go to retirement, you pay off your mortgage, you buy a new house, you buy a new car, you have all these things tied up, you have all these things planned up so that you don't worry about your future. But listen to this proverb. Proverb about what? The rich fool. Luke chapter 12 verse 16. And just quite told him a parable saying that the lot of a rich man produced plenty food. And he thought to himself that I shall do this. For I, sh sh I shall do this. For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this and I will tear down my bands and be the raja ones. And I will store up all my grain and goods. So that means he's, he's having no account. He's paying money there. He's storing money. And then I said to my soul, So, you have armed good legs for many years. The last eat and drink and get merry. And be merry. Now watch this. But God said to him, You fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things that you prepare, who is there will be? Listen to this. So the one who lays up treasure for himself is not rich towards God. And in verse 15, he says, that take, he said, take care. Be on your guard against all covetousness. For, the, for one's life does not consist in abundance of possessions. So the message here is this. If you love money, the Bible says you can't serve two masters. And your life does not possess in your possessions. You see? So today, you're going to see in a moment that God wants you to save money. God wants you to invest money. To invest your money. But you cannot be consumed with these things. What is your great priority in life? What is your priority? Is your goal is to have enough money to impress others? To have the finest house? To satisfy your pride and your ego? For you to gain power? To secure all the money that you can? That is real cross, my dear friends, you see? No man, no woman, no young person can, should have their goal to do what? To have all the money they can. If you have all the money that you can, will you have time to serve God? Of course not. If you have all the money that you can make, will you have time to win souls? Of course not. If you have all the money that you can, will you have time to spend with your family? Of course not. If you have all the money that you can, will you have time to study the word of God? Of course not. And no one the Bible says all this is adultery. The Bible says, you my friend, 
see the kingdom of God and the righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you. So the first key here is this, for you to do also, see the kingdom of God. So here is a man making all the money, but never seeking God first. What is your priority? This is the priority test, my dear friend. Another test here is this, was stewardship test. God bless you. Stewardship test, I want you to see today, my dear friend. May I ask you a question? Is there anything that is in your possession that you will not grab it apart? Apart from God. Because there's something that you are holding in your hand today that I tell you today to get rid of them. You will say no because why? You grab it do what? To have them. Is there anything holding you today not to serve God? Because just Christ has impressed, he said what? Either God or money. Pick a side. You can't serve God and money at the same time. And my message for you today is riches. Here is another test for you, is this admiration test. Who do you admire? How do you, where do you spend your time? Do you spend your time in the ancient money or do you spend your time in the word of God? Are you impressing people? Are you looking at the life of the rich and the famous? Trying to catch up with conditions? Or are you looking at the people who are following God? Who, who do you admire, my dear friend? Do you admire the, the, the famous people? So-called stars, which are not stars at all. The star that fall from heaven is evil, evil. Think about that, my dear friend. Astray. So today I want you to see in this mission, my dear friend. Riches. Because God is not against you making money. In fact, the Bible said in the book of Psalm 35, verse 27, He said, Lord, those who delight in my righteousness shout for joy and be glad and say, evermore great is the lord who delight in the welfare of his servants so god takes pressure when he sees servants prospering deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 he said you, sh you shall remember that the lord your god for it is him who gives you power to get wealth so god wants you to prosper and god wants you to learn god wants you to do what to make money but be careful don't make that mistake. You want to make money, the Bible says be careful. Don't make money in the expense of life or your health. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalm 127 verse 2. It says it is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest. And eating the bread of sorrow. So you see, here is a man burning the two candles on both ends. So people spend half of their life making money and then their health is being destroyed. And then they spend half of their time do what? Try to do what? To cure themselves. Because why? They have a problem with their health. So making money is good, but what expense? Is it expense to your salvation? Is it expense to your health? Is it expense to your family? That's the question you need to ask yourself today. You see? So today, many of you today, you are unhappy on both halves. Number one, do not do anything in expense of what? Of your health of your life number two do not make money in expense of what your character don't get it twisted don't get into some serious business that ungodly business unfair business practices that will do what will transgress the law of god and the law of man gambling for example is an economic flood all business are win-win but gambling is win win lose you can't have it both ways, my dear friend. You can't have winners without losers. You don't have to be a rocket science to understand this, my dear friend, to figure this out. Because the Bible, Bible is in favor of what? Fair business, honest business, honest earning. But don't get into business of gambling. Don't get into the business of pornography, street crops, all these pawn shows, all these crazy shows. Pedras of field. Don't get into the business of alcohol. Poison the minds of young and the adults as well. Alcohol business is like a breath of tears. Ticking with blood. Favor with death. And the cause of this is what you are distancing yourself from God. You see? So there's a cause on this. And we Britain here today, we, we, we get drunk. And we think it's okay. Listen to what the Bible says. Woe to him who makes his neighbor drink, that gives his neighbor a bottle of drink, 
that makes his neighbor to get drunk. This is the word of God in Habakkuk 2, verse 15. Make money, but don't do what? Don't get money in unrighteous way at the expense of your character. And also, not also what? At the expense of what? High values. What am I saying here? What do your students see you doing, my dear friend? What do your students do? They will copy you. When you die, what are you going to leave your children? Is that your character? Is that the character you want to leave to them? Of course not. When you die, you ought to do what? To leave your children a good character. So that when they go, you can remember, my mother, my father, they left me a character. I know who they are. And I can look back and say, yes, I want to copy her. I want to copy him because why? They serve God. So the Bible teaches us about saving money, of course. But the Bible teaches us about what? Do not do what? Hold the money. We have to do what to plan for the future to save money. But let me give you some couple of verses here. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 to 8. He said, Go to the ant, O sludger, consider her ways and be wise without having shave. <laughs> Officer or ruler, she prepares the bread in the summer and gathers her food in the, in, in the harvest. Oh. So that is art. An ant doing all these things. The Bible says, Ant lay food for the hard times. And then a hard time is coming. And the Bible says, if you are lazy, you, my dear friend, go and look at the little ant and learn from them. Don't get it twisted. You see, don't spend the money you don't have. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 20. He said, precious treasure, and all you are in the wise man's dwelling. But a fool man spends it up. Do you have reserves like an ant? Be wise, don't spend it, my dear friend. Don't spend the money you don't have. Don't buy the things you don't need to impress the people you don't like. So we are here to what to do, what to do all this according to the word of God. God wants you to save money according to your needs and not do what, not according to your greedy. James speak about greedy people, people who are holding money. Listen to it, the book of James, chapter 5, verse 1 to 3. He said, come you rich, weep and haul for the mysteries that is coming upon you. Your riches have rotten, and your garments have moth eaten, and your gold and slaver have corrided, and their corruption will be evidence against you, and we eat your flesh like a fire, that you have laid up treasure in the last days, that you have heaped treasure together for the last days. And one of these days, the judgment of God is coming. Your riches will be, will be rusty. It will testify against you because while you are hoarded money, you don't let the money circulate. You are piling money like people piling stamps and cards. Money not being used. It's not money being needed, my dear friend. So the Bible is not against you being rich, my dear friend. By the way, Abraham was rich. David was rich. Solomon was rich. Joseph was rich. Even Mary and Martha and Lazarus, they were all do well people. Even Barnabas was rich. But what James spoke in here against what ruthless hoarding of money. He don't let the money circulate. And when you die, you, you my dear friend, you are going to do what? Be the biggest, be what? Be the biggest loser. Be what? Be the richest fool in the cemetery. We ought to do what? To have enough. You need to, de you need to determine what is enough for you. Don't stop making money. But then make the money that you use and use it for the glory of God. Use the money to spread the gospel news of our Lord Jesus Christ over the world. Because the Bible says this in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 to 21. It says, do not lay up treasure for yourself on earth. Where moth and rust destroy and where teeth break in and steal. But lay up treasures for yourself in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy. And where the teeth do not break in and steal. Watch this. For where your treasure is... There your heart will also be. All these things, the Bible is targeting your heart. God, God wants to change your mindset. God wants to give you what two riches. But the Bible says you can't serve God and money at the same time. And then just Christ speaking here in the book of Luke 16, verse 29 to 23. Just Christ talking about a rich man who died and he's in hell. He lifted up his eyes and being tormented. I can imagine even in funeral, many people might have got there. They have the musicians. I mean, you have, you have all the cars parked outside, Mercedes, BMW, all the fast cars. Even his business partner will say, what a successful man he was. But the man hit up his eye in being in torment in hell. 
Just Christ asked you this question in the book of Mark 8, verse 36 to 37. He said, For what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit your soul? For what can you gain in return for your soul, my dear friend? You say, Brother Kinsley, if I give money, would I, would I, would that get me to heaven? My dear friend, no. He said, You are not being saved by money, you are being saved by the grace of God, not by your works, not by your earning, not by your good works. Not by your good works, not by praying five times, not by praying. You have been saved by what? By the faith on our Lord Jesus Christ. Based what on the down at the cross of Calvary. You cannot bribe God, my dear friend. You can't buy your way into the kingdom of God. All you need to do, trust on Jesus Christ, what he has paid at the cross of Calvary. You see, how sad it will be a man to have billions in the bank and there's nothing for him in the heart. And he rises up on the door of judgment and he, and he meet God face to face. You can offer God your riches. You see that? So today, instead of you trusting your riches, trust Jesus Christ. Trust Jesus Christ. Amen? Do you want to meet God that you don't know? God says here that he's testing you today. He wants to give you a test based on the money that you have in your account, based on your resources. What are you using it for? And the Bible said that he will give you a test. It is called what? Unrighteous wealth. And other things. That is the test. That is the test that you have been tested. And if you do not pass this test, the Bible said, well, you will not do or receive the true riches. And that's what the Bible teaches. Teaches us here today. For us to, uh, to accept Jesus Christ today as our Lord and personal Savior. And the Bible says, seek him. Or you'll find him. He didn't say go and seek money. He said, seek God. You find him. When you see God, the Bible says every other thing will be added to you. And it's quite fascinating. God called that thing that everyone is, is most people are dying for money. He called it a little thing. And that that is much is what you trust in God. The name bless the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen.